Hello, Sam Blasco here for SCM. In this video, we will attempt to show what this machine is capable of, in 10 minutes or less, no less, with a nice table to show for our efforts by the time we are done using all the stations. Please note this was performed on a European version of the machine, so we will not be showing any dado function. I had to travel to Italy to film this because that is where SCM's maestro of video, Luciano Ceretti Venerucci, is located. Traveling to Europe was a real burden for me, but I am dedicated and someone had to do this. As proof of my hardship, I wanted stated that I put on five pounds during the filming of this. And the only reason I bring any of this up is to inform you that in the USA, we bring in this machine with a dado setup. You can use any standard dado stack up to three quarters of an inches wide. During the first few minutes, you will see me unpacking the machine, cleaning it, and installing some components, like the mortiser attachment, outrigger and squaring frame, extra support table, separate miter gauge, along with various and sundry items and components. Please note on the miter gauge that the composite base of the clamp mounting rod has a proud ring at the top of it. This is designed to be inserted into the channel at the base of the miter gauge extrusion so that when you tighten the bar to the sliding table, the miter gauge extrusion is held tightly in place, which aids in keeping the fence rigid during operation. One thing to note about installing and using the joiner fence is, for edge joining, you want a more rigid fence since you press on the face of the fence to get a square edge. In those instances, you would install the stiffener rod behind the fence and nearly at the cutter head. It consists of a small mounting block and a steel rod. There is a threaded hole in the block which is then tightened and clamps the rod in place, making the fence very rigid. The black wedges in the saw guard are for packaging purposes and should be removed before using the guard. When installing the blade, there is a hole in the table for the lock rod, which locks the arbor and allows you to work the nut on or off. I would like to note that the threads always tighten against the direction the teeth are rotating for any cutting tool. This keeps the hardware from loosening during operation, and because of this, there is no need to over-tighten the nut. For the riving knife, you would want to keep the leading edge of the knife approximately one-eighth of an inch from the teeth of the blade. Here are the plans and the rough lumber for our table. We will start by squaring up and dimensioning our plywood top. One thing to note here is when working on a slider, for most things, you just keep making left turns with the material, allowing you to do your rip cuts and cross cuts one right after the other with each part, rather than having to rip everything first, restage, and come back and cross cut everything next, like on a conventional table saw. Next we take our leg stock to the joiner to flatten two faces and square one corner. You'll note here we are demonstrating the OSHA-approved American-style guard, not the European guard. All SCM joiners and joiner planers for the USA will come standard with this type of guard. Once we mark our square corner, we will be ready for the planer and final dimensioning. This machine has the SCM Xylent head installed on the joiner planer. The Tursa cutter head system is also available. Both are upgraded systems that offer unique advantages. Talk to your representative to see which system is best for you. Here you can see we are squaring one end and cutting to dimension our table legs.
When setting the planar height, the digital readout makes easy work of getting the exact thickness we want. This is standard on all Elite or E level machines. Now begins the drudgery of thicknessing our remaining stock so that it is all uniform, one by one, one after the other. This is when it is good to have a helper on the outfeed side of the planer. Now that we have established all uniform thickness on the rest of our pieces, we want to put a square and flat edge on the boards. And once you have a square corner on something, you can pretty much go anywhere in 90% of woodworking projects. Here we are showing an alternative to using a joiner for that first flat and square edge. We have a sliding table here, so we can do straight line cutting in one pass, thus avoiding the two to six or even more passes this would require using a joiner. Now that we have square and flat edges on our stock, we can set the rip fence and do some parallel cutting to the widths we need. This can also be done on the sliding table with some simple jigs or, in some cases, more sophisticated positioners because once we have a straight edge, we really only need two points in space equidistant from the slider's edge to achieve a parallel cut. However, we will save that demonstration for another day. Now that we have the widths we want on the remaining parts, we can cross cut them to their intended dimensions, or in the case of our moldings, put them off to the side to be shaped a little later. When it comes to cross cutting, I really prefer to thrust cut. That is, the piece to be cut is between me and the fence, thus I am the clamp, keeping things tight to the fence as they are being cut. Next, it is time to set up the shaper for the tenons. And all we are really looking to do at this point is round the corner so they'll fit nicely with our mortises to be cut a little later. Then, while we have the shaper stuff installed, we will change the profile and cut our moldings. This molding will be a two-stage molding, which means we will use two different setups to achieve the shape we want. For tooling, a multi-profile insert set like we are using here is a great way to get into shaper tooling for those new to a shaper. Here you can see one of the biggest advantages to using a shaper instead of a router table. We only need one pass, rather than having to do multiple passes to get to our desired depth of cut. Time to install the mortise bit and set up to cut the mortises. We only need to mark one leg for the corners and one of everything else. Then we set the stops and height and do a run at each setting. This is a very efficient and easy way to cut multiple mortises that are extremely accurate and repeatable, all the while maintaining a nice ergonomic body position. Plus you get a larger range and depth than you can achieve with handheld systems. cutting the tenon stock to length. Here you can see how easy it is to do repetitive cross cuts with a slider. Set a stop away from the blade and rock on. Glue up time. Hustle and clamp. Every now and then swearing and yelling at yourself as you screw up the order. Hoping to get it right before the glue starts to set. We didn't show the dry run here to make sure that it will all fit as intended, which I highly suggest by the way, as practice doesn't necessarily make perfect but it does cut down on the amount of swearing needed to complete the task. While the glue sets up, we'll cut the miters for the corner supports and trim moldings, and then we can install those a little bit later. One last detail is to add a decorative edge to our tabletop, which we will do using the sliding table and the shaper together. Remember, with a slider, you just keep making left turns. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed our demonstration of this powerful Minimax combination machine. If you are a one-person shop, tight on space, or both, this is the greatest way to maximize your space without having to sacrifice industrial quality machining tools. Thank you for watching. I have to leave Italy now, return to my shop, and go on a diet for a while. Ciao.